What could be better in a cold winter than shoving your hands into a nice warm muff? And this was particularly interesting because um, it's electrically heated. It's, it's another Chinese delight. And it comes uh, with no water in it. You don't have to tip the water out once you put it in. You take this plug out and it comes with a little filler that goes on to a standard drinks bottle. And although it doesn't come with, uh, it doesn't come with British instructions, I, I didn't notice initially that uh, it does say that um, the quantity of water you put in should be round about 500 ml. I put in a lot more than that. I'm not sure if that really matters much. But, um, oh, there it is. Uh, is it there? Oh, yeah. 550, I think it's 550 millilitres, I'm guessing. But um, the other instructions are basically saying, fill it with water, put the cork in, wipe it down, you're ready to go, and uh, don't put it under your baby, but put it next to your baby, sort of thing like that. So um, I filled it, uh, and then you click this round. It's quite nice, actually. It goes round, you hear a wee sprinkle, bing, and then it clicks round. And then you plug it in. And the connector has an LED in the top of it, so let's uh, monitor the wattage here. You plug it in, a wee red LED light's in the top, and it immediately starts heating. Now, if you notice the power here, it's currently at 355 watts, but if you disturb it at all, the wattage changes, because this is an electrode boiler in here again. And uh, I've got no problem with that this time, because it's all completely isolated from, you can't touch the water in any way, it's, it's inside this, this pouch. But uh, when it's finally heated up, uh, the, there's a wee sort of metallic tink inside of a, a thermostat, and the red LED goes out. So um, I'm kind of loath to take this to bits, uh, although I've now ordered another one, because actually it heats up to a nice modest temperature, not too hot. And it is really, really warm in the hands. It's quite a nice little thing, and it seems to work quite well. But we get these things to take to bits, so uh, let's take it to bits. I'm just going to go and empty this and cut it open, and then we'll investigate what's in here. So now it's open, it reveals a sort of like a vinyl inside, a sort of clear layer, and then a sort of rubbery layer beyond that. So a couple of layers of uh, the protection, uh, the outer one having the fleece layer stuck into it. And the heating module itself, I'll just put that out the way, uh, consists of, it's, this uh, cap snaps off, this bit's glued in, but inside are two carbon electrodes and a bimetallic uh, thermostat just physically pressed into this sort of flexible, I'm not sure I'd call it silicone, I think, I'm not 100% sure what that is, it's a sort of rubbery, flexible plastic. And uh, the connections that come in, you've got the the two base pins are live and neutral, and the yellow is the signal back to the LED. And the blue goes straight to uh, one of the electrodes. And it's worth noting that the electrodes have lots of anti-tracking gaps between them, partly, I'm guessing, to avoid stuff being squished shut, you know, if someone really presses it hard or sits in it. But um, I'm not percent sure why they're actually angled in that style, one being angled out sideways and the other the other straight down, unless it's just to get a distance. But also I'm guessing this is anti-tracking as well, so that if, you know, you pull it out the water in some way and the water gets, you know, or it doesn't have enough water in it, uh, it doesn't form a sort of conductive path as it sort of dries out and uh, just gradually over time track. I'm guessing that's what that is. Um, so the blue wire goes straight down to one of the electrodes. The red wire goes through the thermostat, comes out on the yellow wire into the... Uh, other electrode, and also up to the middle electrode here. So I'm guessing that if this is just putting mains up and it's an LED, that there's just that's just one of these systems that uses the single resistor again. So there's the LED connected to the uh, middle pin. The other connection goes from the, yep, it's a, what colour band is that? Ooh, I think it's brown, red, yellow, 120k, which uh, that's uh, not super generously rated for what looks like a quarter watt resistor, uh, given that the LED will conduct in both halves of the waveform. I don't think it's necessarily a, a bipolar LED, I don't think it's sort of like AC LED. 
you do get them with inverse parallel chips inside them. I think they're probably just um, allowing for the fact that when it reaches its peak inverse voltage, it will short out anyway. So it will actually conduct in both halves. So that resistor would get warm. But having said that, it's only operating for as long as it takes to heat the pack up, and it doesn't take that long to heat the pack up. So that was quite interesting. It seems okay. It seems quite an interesting design. It's unusual to see the electrode arrangement used in an application like this, but I suppose it makes sense in that you can't, it saves all the problems of having an actual physical heating element inside. If someone tried turning it on without water, it could cause uh, burning of the plastic. But this way, not, not much can really happen. It, it really is the water is the element. So yeah, that, that's quite interesting, actually. I quite like it. It's quite a neat sort of thing. Um, I'll probably provide a link to this on the in the description below on it's, because uh, there are quite a few sellers and they seem to use the base uh, bag but then all sorts of random theming with like well My Little Kitty type stuff and strange monkeys and stuff like that but uh, fundamentally they all seem to contain you know that behind the fascia they, they contain the same sort of mass-produced bag with this same sort of assembly. Uh, the price also varies dramatically. Uh, these ones cost about, I think it was about £6 from China, uh, but you see them in a, a westernised version being sold for about £35, so uh, quite a dramatic price range on them. But uh, quite a nice implementation, I quite like that. It's quite interesting. It's uh, one of the safest implementations of the electro boiler I've seen. I noticed that what I thought was a carbon electrode sticks to a magnet. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. It, it's got a threaded section at the back. I don't know if that's just a plating they've got in that or if it's bonded in. Uh, certainly it's got a um, sort of hex head in it for screwing it into the whatever it's put into. So I'm guessing that it's probably just an iron um, electrode. Certainly it just seems... I don't know if they've got some sort of coating on it or something like that, but it's... It, it's not really what I was expecting there. Yeah, so probably not carbon. Probably, in fact, you know, let's scrape it. Let's uh, scratch it with a file. This is where I have to find the file. This is where I can pick the file to find the file, probably. Oh, I've just failed to find the file. Uh, let's uh, scratch it with a screwdriver then. Okay, that is shiny underneath, so I'm reckoning that was probably... The only reason that's black is because it's been exposed to the um, electrolytic action, so to speak. The uh, I don't know if it's coated or if it's just actually just naturally occurred through the um, electrical activity. Uh, but that is a... Yeah, it's shiny underneath, so if, if it is a coating, it is very just, you know, molecular thick, but it may not be a coating, it may actually be a, a very tiny amount of corrosion. But that's quite interesting still, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, neat, I'm guessing, it's just standard iron then.